Our purpose this evening is to uh, have a conversation with Larry Barlow as representative of the Florida Family Therapy, is it Association? Is that what the ACA is? Alliance. Alliance. Me. The Alliance. Florida Family Therapy Alliance. Uh, mm -hmm. And our primary purpose is not only for the people on the call this evening, but to create a recording to share with everybody of both organizations as we attempt to explain the difference and why you might want to join one hey, Robin. Or, other, or both. Hey. Oh, Robin, nice. Is that your office or your home? Home. Home. Oh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I have a seven o'clock uh, appointment at home. So. Okay, very good, very good. Alrighty then. Well, so Larry, it's great to to see you uh, on here, and um, just uh, in in the spirit of full disclosure, I am currently both a paying member of FFTA and the Fin, um, right. and I believe Larry, you are as well. Right. Right. Right, right. I um, am too. I am yep. too. And so, so is Irma. Yeah. So, Annalyn, I have a question. So, when I when I renewed my dues for AMFT, I added um, FAMFT at the time, or the Florida division. The Finn, so right? I, uh -huh. So I don't know whether it went to Finn or FF. Uh, it's an excellent question. An excellent question. So once again, the Finn is a subsidiary, sort of like the division, sort of mm -hmm. kind of like, um, of AMFT. Whereas FFTA is not affiliated in any way, financially, legally, communication. Uh, um, I could say some other things, but I'll let Larry, who's far more politically uh, adept than I am, I tend to be politically incorrect with some frequency. So, um, so yes, they are not. So when you paid your money for Finn, uh -huh. that money went to the Finn organization, the online organization, minus some re reasonably large percentage that AMFT takes for processing. Mm -hmm. So then how would, how would I find out about, so I wasn't really sure, therefore I haven't paid sure. for FFTA, which I would like to do. Very good. So sure. that's something we, sure. need to, we need to make very clear. How does one become a member of FFTA if they wished to? <clears throat> um, right. and, but, but Robin, you explained that if one wishes to be a member of FIN, it's AAMFT membership at time of renewal or at time of um, any time, any point you want to, you can go in and add Finn, and those fees then go to Finn. And one of the reasons you want to do that is because the Finn is responsible for paying half of the lobbyists' fees. So right now, FFTA, as far as I know, doesn't pay for the lobbyist. Yeah. The yeah. Finn does, and then AMFT pays half. So it's half and half, right? And right. that is at the cost of $750 a month. So if we don't have membership, you know, ongoing and, and updating, um, then, we, then we will eventually not be able to afford the lobbyist. Um, and our membership in the division, when I was president quite a long time ago, was it about 1,200 people? in the neighborhood of 1,200 people. At the present time, Irma, we're at what, 377? 374? 377. Something. Yeah, yeah, I have 377. 377. Yeah. Right, so what's wow. happening is that when yeah. people renew, so either people are not renewing for AMFT at all, and therefore not being a part of FIN, they are renewing for AMFT, but not joining the FIN, mm -hmm. right? Do you know any of the, the numbers? People How do you mean? Florida, people who live in Florida who, who are still members of AMFT and have chosen not to be a member of FIN. Or that we have not been given, but we have been asking for that so that we could reach out to those people. Yeah. But at the present time, all they're giving, all AMFT is providing to us is the, are the FIN members. 
not the Florida AMFT members who are not part of Finn so that we could reach out. But we're, we're working on getting, getting, trying to get that kind of information. Yeah. So Carrie Baldwin, good evening. Glad you're here. Since you're one of the people, the least I could do is welcome you. So, um, so that's, so what is the purpose of the Finn? So the Finn is the statewide organization and we are 100% cyber. So our meetings are always going to be in webinar form like this. We will eventually be providing CEUs. In fact, in July, the webinar that we will do with Richard Long up, up in the upper right corner will be on telemental health. And that will be very interesting because Richard is going to talk about the new law that just came out and will go into effect July 1st. So we're as timely as, as probably humanly possible What's on that. that. What's the date? J July 18th. July 18th, same six o'clock, yeah, okay. and uh, it'll be a different link, but um, but it will be in the newsletter on the website and uh, and sent via emails. So we'll we'll let you know about that. Um, if there is a topic that any of you would either a like to present on, or b like to get presented, send us an email. Let us know. We'll, we, you know, we take requests, as they say, um, but um, we're, we're looking to, to be of service to the entire state um, because the FFTA, um, which is built of chapters, does not necessarily reach every corner, but we can because we are virtual. So anybody can participate. They don't have to be a member of a chapter. And, uh, and get the benefit of that. Um, and we would like to know what benefits y'all are looking for. We also dramatically reduced the fee down to 25 bucks to make it super affordable for everybody. Um, but that gives us not a whole lot of money to work with. And one thing that is really different from the fin to compare to the division is because we don't have a Larry who's paid to, to work 10 hours a week for us. We are an entirely volunteer board of just four. So we get done with the four of us can get done. So just kinda so like you know. So like that's the old days before Larry. Like the old days before Larry and before or, or other executive directors. I don't know. I, 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 I wasn't a member at, of the division at the time that we didn't have an executive director. So, uh, so that is a very, very long time ago. But yes, it, it feels like uh, kind of starting over. Um, anyway, so that's so, so we're here to serve the whole state in a whole state kind of way, um, as opposed to the FFTA. And I'll let Larry speak to what it does and how it is different. Okay. Yeah, the, um, the FIN is actually part, Robin, of what um, AAMFT is now calling engagement program. Mm -hmm. So it's, this is a geographic engagement program. Um, in some states, they probably have cities like Minneapolis, maybe, that is an engagement program that they have their own thing going. Um, they're all voluntary. When, when we renew our membership, then we select, do you want to be a part of the family team? Do you want to be part of any topical interest group? Do you want to be part of the Florida Interest Network as an engagement program? Um, so that, that's what, you know, I'm, I can, I plan to continue to be an AMFT member. I'm not going to uh, the conference this year in Austin. Uh, that's the, the one of the first I've missed in many, many years. But um, uh, I do plan to continue to keep that as an identity as a marriage family therapist because I don't think the other national groups really 
have the same sort of identity that AAMFT does for us as marriage family therapists. Uh, ACA, APA, NASW, they all have relational groups, but they do not have the same meaning or the same identity, in my opinion. Okay, that's Larry's opinion only. So FFPA, if you remember going back uh, a few years ago now, when this idea first came out, that AMFT was going to change the bylaws, as SICA bylaws changed, um, every division was given options of what do you want to do. Do you want to dissolve? And many did. Do you want to become an affiliate uh, of AAMFT, which is most similar to the divisional status we had, or do you want to become an interest network? And we added a fourth to that, which was the option to uh, be a standalone independent state association. And if you remember, we went around to all the chapters, every chapter we had at that time, and we, uh, Melinda and I, uh, did a I did a training, and then Melinda and I did a question and answer. And we passed out surveys to people. And then at the end of the many months, uh, we tallied the surveys. And there was a strong interest in retaining an independent uh, status, which is where FFTA came from. Now, the reason it's called an alliance is because the primary purpose is only to focus on Florida and to align all the chapters. And we have hopes that we can expand the chapters. For example, we have interest in Jacksonville. Um, we have interest in St. Petersburg. Uh, I have a group of people in St. Petersburg who uh, want to start reactivate a chapter there. I've talked to people in Miami about reactivating that chapter, even though it's still active, it doesn't do anything currently. And so there's a lot of interest like that with chapters, but we felt like chapters needed to be connected. <laughs> Have seven, eight, nine, ten, or more chapters that were all standalone. We also felt that the best way, and this is Melinda's uh, instinct also as a long, long time lobbyist in Florida is that we need boots on the ground mm -hmm. and that the chapters uh, have strength in being able to say, just like uh, they did this year to our representative and Senator uh, Mercado and Senator Torres, who sponsored the MFT bill. Um, the chapter met with them, so it wasn't just an individual member. It represented Orlando, Central Florida. And so that's kind of what we want to support the work of these chapters. We also intend to do trainings. Uh, this past renewal, I went to every chapter and did a renewal training offered uh, licensure renewal training. Now, what's happening, um, and in fact, I'm offering right now, I'm offering uh, uh, licensure, pre-licensure training in Orlando in June, mid-June, uh, to go down and meet at Nova Southeastern's campus there in Orlando and train up to 40 uh, registered interns not just MFTs, but all, any 491. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening is interesting is that um, uh, most of the trainings, when I've done them over the past two years, the people who come really want to do in-person training. But most of the people who come are not your 30-year-olds, your 20-year-olds, that sort of thing. 
And uh, just like with the registered interns, uh, so far, we're not getting a huge interest in doing a live training that takes uh, 14 hours. So it's spread out over two days, or 13 hours, sorry, 13 hours spread out over two days. Um, because the younger people don't have the same interest in meeting in person, networking in that way that people, uh, especially the baby boomer generation, but even the younger generations past baby booms, uh, also have interest in networking in person. So the chapters are all still working, um, except Tallahassee is kind of dormant right now. But the chapters as a whole, uh, some of them are very strong and have large numbers at the meeting and they want to do it in person. And that's, and so the big thing this year was to help get the chapters going, make the transition, that sort of thing. Now we haven't sent out a, a link for people to join FFTA because there was a lot of stuff that had to be done in addition to the legislature, legislative support. Uh, I went with Melinda to the Capitol Hill twice and testified, uh, committee meeting, things like that, uh, to support the work that she was doing with the Interest Network uh, on behalf of MFTs in Florida. Um, but also, uh, we had to change our whole website because the website we had, although FAMFT owned it, it was independent, it had AMFT stuff all over it. And so they wanted us to, of course, remove all of that so as people don't get confused, of course. Um, the other thing we've had to do was we had to change our corporate status. And that took about four or five months to do that with the Division of Corporations. So the old FAMFT that was there for about 30 years as a corporate status in Florida has now been uh, done away with. It's totally wiped away as if it never existed. Uh, so FSTA. It was like, yeah. like this. It, it, was, it was like FMFT had to divorce AMFT, get rid of all its assets, get rid of all of all of the information, change change right. its last right. name. You know, all, all of that, right? Uh, you know, decide, yeah. Decide our, who got the children, our purpose is not to know, compete. All of that. Yeah, our purpose is at least in the leadership currently. Our purpose is not to compete with uh, AAMFT. Uh, there is a difference in our membership in that the members, um, to be a member of FFTA, you don't have to be a member of AAMFT. So we're actually open to any licensed mental health professional, just like my wife Sandy, who's been a CSW. She's not a member of AMFT. Her national uh, membership is NASW. Um, but she has a real interest in working with families, and she does work with families. Uh, she has a real interest in the MFT work. And so she's joined FFCA. And that is a big difference uh, to do that. But we don't have the membership drive ready to do. We've had some individuals who have gone ahead, like Annalyn and Irma, who've joined. We've had about 25 people. But what I can do, if you're interested in joining, Robin, I'll send you a, an invoice, email, electronic invoice, and it's $100 a year, and you just click on it, pay that, and then you'll be a member of FFTA. Yeah, I, I, so, I'm confused as to if did I miss something along the way? How how did I? No, no, because we just didn't have the technology ready to do that, and um, 
uh, we've made a lot of strides. We've done a lot of work, although there for about two or three months, primarily we were focused on trying to get the uh, Florida law changed. There were actually three bills this year, including the one that Melinda had sponsored with Mercado and uh, Senator Torres. Um, there were three bills that would have changed the LMFT law. One of them was with the Department of Health, their package bill. And the bill passed through all the committees. It passed the House. Uh, however, um, it uh, got hung up and it was put on the calendar, but they never did call to vote on it, unfortunately, at the end. So and just, none of just the to clarify, passed. legislative yeah. activities like that are the, the FIN and FFTA are collaborative. So yeah, so I would say we're collaborative. Right. Exactly. So so you know, Melinda, the lobbyist, is is paid by the Finn, and she she participates in the, in the uh, family team meetings of AANFP, and is in regular communication with the legislative people at AAMFT. But she also very wisely includes. Larry and Tyon and the and the FFTA people, so that you know the 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 idea here is that between the two organizations, that we can capture as much of the state as many MFTs, whether they are happy with AMFT or not, and it, whether they are actually MFTs or not, that we can capture as many people doing this work, doing this systemic work um, to, to keep them educated, to keep them uh, connected, collaborating, keep the laws up to date, all of that, you know, we, you know, we will collaborate the two organizations. Um, but access to the organizations are different and kind of our presence is different because as Larry said, yeah. FFTA is more centered in the chapters, which have been independent for years. I mean, years and wow. years. The, the chapters have been wholly independent, owned, had their own Fed ID, own website, own everything. And if, if Finn and FFTA were to suddenly disappear, the chapters would remain. They would, they would still function to whatever degree the people of that chapter wish to make it survive right, right. um so let me so right. to that let me talk a little bit about we've got some questions um andrea could you let me let me okay, let me sorry. say one other thing that's an important distinction so the other thing is we've worked for years with the regulatory board 491 board to have an alliance built a strong alliance with them and they still in fact when somebody calls and wants information about moving to Florida or they have an ethics question, um, they don't answer any of those. They refer them. They're still referring them to, to me, basically to FFTA now. And, at the, and basically, uh, they've had a total staff turnover at the 491 board. Um, and the 491 board is kind of struggling, to tell you the truth. Uh, they barely met the quorum, uh, not the last meeting, but the one before that in Jack. Well, they didn't meet the quorum in Jacksonville. They could not do any of the discipline cases. So it's important for us to support and align with that work uh, so that when they change rules, MFTs are represented because if we're not represented there, uh, then NASW representative and the FOMCA representative are not going to take MFTs into account at all. So none of the rules would therefore be passed, uh, you know, by uh, that would favor MFTs. So that's a huge thing that we're trying to keep going. And thus far, we've been fortunate to do that. 
Although right now uh, we've got a money crunch, then that's that's been a hindrance. But I wanted to make that distinction. The chapters and the regulatory board and supporting the work that Melinda and the Finn are doing. So Those I have a three. question, Larry. So is, is Melinda at all involved in FFTA? Or uh, she is. She is. She talks to me regularly. Uh, she calls. Uh, she asks for us to uh, arrange meetings with legislators. Um, uh, she does not work for us, but as, as Annalyn said, we still have a very collaborative relationship. And you asked about the new law on telehealth. In fact, yes, Richard is aware of that, I'm sure. But we that's one of the trainings that I'm thinking we want to put together in July or August to have a training in Orlando uh, for the purposes of telling people about the new telehealth law. That one did pass. And and it's like so, one thing that I can see of, of us that would both show our collaboration and our difference is that the Finn will offer a training on telemental health virtually. Yeah. And and FFTA will offer a similar training, same content, but offer it in person and on the ground. Yeah. That and could so work. people can get the information both ways. And even if they don't belong to either organization, we'll try to figure out a way to make them pay for either way they get it. Pay for it you know, mm -hmm. virtually by, by paying to be able to see the recording, or obviously anybody can show up and pay the fee to, to go to a workshop right. that's on ground. So that's a way that we, that we are collaborating, but it also distinct shows our distinction of virtual versus in person. Yeah. So right. I have a question, if you don't mind, because um, I am licensed in both Pennsylvania and Florida, and I'm presently residing in Florida, um, and I do telehealth. How would I access the information? Because the training is prior to, and I appreciate the information, which is really helpful to be part of this um, online virtual organization, I guess. Um, but where do I access the information prior to the training, since it goes into effect July 1st? Right. Well, so, well, so one thing is that is that we will post the the new we'll post the law and the summary of it on our website so that you can yeah. read it for yourself. Basically, though, the 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 quick and dirty is that mostly what it says is how other people outside of Florida can provide services in Florida. We right. here in Florida could always do telemental health with Florida residents. So if you, no matter where you physically were, you could, prov if you're licensed in Florida, you could be in Tahiti and still do telemental health with someone who is in Florida. But mostly what the telemental health law is about how people outside of Florida can legally provide services. So it doesn't really help us. My hope is well, that this it, will be a law that other states will adopt similarly and there'll be more cross-fertilization across state lines. Clary? There will. There, there will be because the 491 board members have been talking to, another, to other groups, other states, and they are collaborating to uh, uh, work that sort of thing out. But what happened, even though the law was passed, and I don't know if the governor's actually signed it yet or not. I haven't seen anything saying the governor has signed it, but I know he will because this is one of his agenda items, is telemental health. Um, and the law is passed. It'll go into effect typically July 1, but that's the law. That doesn't say anything about the nuts and bolts. So the 491 board has to write rules to implement the legislative intent, the law. And that is going to take a little while to develop. So as far as uh, getting how to get training and so on and so on and, and 
people being approved to provide training for telemental health, uh, that has not been laid out yet. Um, but, but what Annalyn said is that it's very accurate about the general scope of the way the bill was worded. And also, it isn't about telemental health. It's about telehealth. So you won't find it right. attached anywhere in 491 or anything like that. It's not, it's broader than that. It's telehealth. Right. So you won't be finding it in, in the chapters that we're used to looking for stuff. Okay. Um, so yes, we will post it on, I'm, I'm sure Andrea is taking a note right now um, that, and if she doesn't have the document, I'll be sure to send it to her. It'll be in our newsletter that we'll send out shortly. So we, we will put it out there where you can get at it uh, and, and see what it says. But yeah, I think Larry's point is well made. Is it anything that's different than we're currently doing, like any required training or anything like that, that won't happen until the 491 board talks about how that law is then implemented for us. Right. And is there any way that someone could tell me, I don't know how I got on your mailing list, but how would I find out if I paid the dues because I knew in terms of Florida, in terms of my when I renewed for AMFT, so I don't even know if I paid for your for that uh, F. I don't know then or well, whatever just, that was. Ellen, just pay again. It's only twenty five bucks. You know, no, I'm oh, okay. I didn't know if you I'm already so had the list and you knew. Okay. If, if your name is on our email list, then at least as far as AMFT is concerned, is you're a member of Finn. So okay. if you wanna if you wanna go in and look at your profile and see okay. what you what you've paid for. Um, that that would be a way to do it, but for sure, whenever you renew next, whenever that is, um, then that you'll have to do it on purpose. Perfect. And that's okay. that's another huge difference mm -hmm. is that to be a member of Finn, you have to click and pay for it on purpose. Right. It used to be that if you were a member of AMFT, you were automatically an FAMFT member, and you had to pay for it. You didn't have a choice. Now you have to choose to do so. Someone and call. Link. Yes. Irma. Yeah. I have the list because I'm the secretary. <laughs> so you, she's looking at the list right now, Ellen, to see if you're on the list. But that, that I would think that's the only way you got our email is, is, is that you're on our list. Right. Yeah. It's Ellen at ellenpipertherapy.com. So, so you're on the list. You're, you're considered a member then. So similar, Thank you. it may be, so this is what happened. So we're in a, everybody's in a transition. Anyone who was a member of FAMFT, that means anybody who's an AMFT member and therefore an FA, FAMFT member was automatically made a member of the FIN until they renew. So it may be that your renewal is coming up soon, right? Because I renewed in October last year, and I had to be a member of, I had to choose to be a member of Finn. So we're winding up to the end of that first year of all the people that were automatically grandfathered in now in order to remain We'll have to choose it on purpose. And I'm, I'm frankly a little nervous about, you know, our numbers have already dropped from 1,200 to 377, dropping even further. And so we need to do a lot more recruitment and things like that. Um, well, I, I have a comment, Annalyn. I, I think to some extent, it, it's not clear how important it is to be a part of Finn for the advocacy piece. You know, because right. It, it, you're right. You know, money needs to be there, and, and I don't think that it's clear. I, I felt like at the conference last year when there was, I felt like it was a sorority rush. All of the different interest networks were trying to recruit people to, you know, be part of it and pay some dues. Absolutely. But I, but I, I don't think yeah. though yeah. That, that it it was as clear um, how important it is to to maintain a membership in, in the state organization for the advocacy piece. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and frankly, Robin, it, it feels a little weird in that many of the major things that FAMFT did 
is what got put onto the fin, but with a whole lot less support, a whole lot less money, a whole lot more um, cost to continue to do business than FAMFT did. And, uh, and we, were, we were told in essence that if, if, if we didn't create a fin that, that, that AMFT would go create one. I don't know who in the heck they thought was going to do all this hard work and, and do it for free and all that kind of good stuff. But at any rate, so I can, it, this is the, one of the major reasons for tonight's meeting is to help people understand FMFT is no more. If you want to be a part of the state organization that does the legislating, you want to be a member of FIN and it's only 25 bucks at this point. And their FFTA is connected to the chapter. So in a way, AMFT FIN is kind of top down. FFTA is chapters up. So but you know what? I, I think so, that, that there's another compelling reason to join FFTA and that's for the 491 piece because right. without that, then we lose our voice. Absolutely. So, so Absolutely. Really it's important to be a member of both. Of both. Of both. Absolutely. Because both yeah. organizations yeah. Are, are are collaborating for all of the advocacy stuff exactly right because exactly. what F, what finn doesn't do for 491 we really need right 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 right, right. well and, I mean, and and now that they fixed when i rejoined um back in january when it was my renewal uh the only option was 98 dollars for the fin uh I'm glad to hear they finally got it corrected to what was voted for, which was $25. So actually joining both now is almost just slightly more than it would have been to be a member of FAMFT in the past. So it's $125 a year. So right. it's not an appreciable difference. Right. So I have a, a, a suggestion. <laughs> I just came. So um, and Anna Lynn, are you going to be in Austin? I no, I don't. I don't have the time or the or the wherewithal to do that. I know. I wish. I. I. You know, if there were Florida members there who could who could advocate for for the fin, that would be great. Um, I don't know that it would be appropriate to advocate for FFTA. I just don't know. Um, well, my thought is, if if there were enough Florida people, just to to highlight the difference and the need for both. Yeah, absolutely. And, I'll, I'll and I'm, I'm planning to go. I'll talk good. About and, it. and like I said, this recording, as soon as AMFT processes, it will be on our website. Um, and we will send it out as a link to the members. And as soon as we get all of the AMFT Florida members who are not FIN members, if, as long as we get their contact information, then we can send it out to them as well. Um, but you know, it's, um, it's a lot of work to try to do this as a, as a volunteer, as you, as, you, as those of you who've been around a long time know. So the more, I mean, if anybody's got a couple of hours that they'd be willing to help with this kind of stuff, um, you know, we would, we would appreciate some of that help. Um, and the simplest one would be to volunteer to be a presenter at one of these monthly webinars um and you know participate in in ongoing training for the whole state and that sort of thing um, or to write an article for our website or a newsletter um you know really simple small one hour tasks um, would certainly help us a lot now for ffta your best bet would be to uh, get involved with a chapter is that not right larry yeah, we're going to be having newsletters and everything. Um, we've just got to finish getting our website and everything uh, reset up and uh, get it all working. But uh, yes, we we will be doing newsletters just like FF, FAMFT always did, and uh, so there will be more communication. But the but the big difference is Finn is just Finn. It's just it's just the one organization, whereas FFTA is chapter and then 
the chapter alliance, the, the alliance of the chapters. Um, and so that's a, a huge difference to, to understand. So one can be very active in the chapter and, and doing things like that is a way to contribute to FFTA. So it's a, it's kind of a, it's not really two tier, not exactly. The governance is, is from the bottom up, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a different be it's, um, it's a different beast. Then Finn. In the sake of time, oh, I'm sorry. In the sake of time, um, I, I remember um, someone has a meeting at seven o'clock. Um, yeah. I just want to ask a couple of the questions that were online. Yeah, um, let's get those. Let's today. get those. Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, um, I, I posted some, but I'm just going to go ahead and just pick the, the best ones, I'll say. Okay. Um, and so this is, of course, for you, Dr. Scooby and Dr. Barlow. Um, so one of the biggest ones in and I could always go back and send the email with the division, how we broke it down the first time with the FIN versus FFPA um, and AAMFT. So the FIN 10 Gen, I'll send that back out um, one more time. Um, one of their questions was, other than collegiately um, and offering CEs, the purpose to join FFPA as well as FIN, what would you like me to send out on the newsletter? I, I think we've talked about it here. Uh, the, right. Yeah, I think we, I think we've, I think we've said it. Um, and it, it, in a lot of ways, I think it has to do with how does any one individual like to engage? If you there. like, oh. if you prefer to engage virtually, then Finn does that exclusively. If you um, want to engage in person and, and go to events that are on the ground and in, interactive in person, then the chapter in FFTA is, is going to be more for you. Um, but why miss out? Because, you know, we're certainly we're going to collaborate enough that those things that we think should be offered in both platforms, mm -hmm. live and, and virtual, we'll do that. But there will be plenty of ways in which we're going to be offering different things. And so, you know, that way you'll have a, a broader choice um, of what you attend. Um, so, so there's that. But, but okay. Anna, look, I, think I, like that, I, I think that just in addition to emphasizing that, the advocacy piece and the 491 piece really has to be emphasized just as much. It's not just about training yes. I, in person. I agree. Yeah. Right, right. I agree. Uh, the, the rules, the rules are so important uh, with the 491 board and the people that serve on the 491 board. My wife, Sandy, was chair, as many of you know, uh, for a number of years. Um, I know all the people on the board, but they're elected to protect the consumer. They're not there to take care of MFTs or LCSWs or our professional counselors, mental health counselors. Uh, they're there to protect the consumer. So we have to have representation there or it's not going to take long before rules are going to be rewritten and MFTs as the small guy are going to be left out. Right. And, and it will take both our organizations rallying all members it to is. participate. It is. Yeah, yeah, you have to keep in mind that uh, NASW, when you look at LTSWs and LMHCs, they have over 10,000 licensees of each one of those groups. So those over well over 20,000 people. We have about 2,400 people licensed in the MFT world, and that includes our interns. So, um, so just by sheer numbers, when the the staff at DOH, COH, you know, are interested, they they're going to reach out to the larger groups, unless we unless we advocate. To be yeah, involved. Unless, unless we elbow our way into the party. Yeah, right. Which we do now. <laughs> so well, we we have those Thanks connections. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, Larry's, Larry's going to want to retire one of these days. So <laughs> it's, it's really important that we, we cultivate the next generations of right. people who will, will take up 
the challenge of staying in touch and going to the meetings. And I mean, one of the reasons Larry gets called all the time is because he attends every one of those damn meetings. Well, they're all up in the north part of the state. They don't come down to South Florida. So Rarely. it makes it really, really challenging for the South Florida people to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we need... And, and by the way, the north part of the chapter or the, of the state is also where we don't have as many chapters of FFTA, right? And so right, right. neither organization is strong up there. So it takes both our organizations to, to make the connection and get more people uh, engaged. So right. speaking for I'm, I'm going to say goodbye and sign off. Good night, so, good night uh, Robin. Thanks, Robin. What are some you. other questions, uh, Andrea, uh, so we make sure we get those answered? So speaking for recruitment as well as the chapter, and speaking for Jacksonville myself, um, when it comes to that $100 membership, the people that I do have on my little list, what would that cover? Right, yeah. yeah. So the $100 would, would get them what, Larry? Well, it gets you the representation. Um, it gets you the, um, uh, we're offering free six hours of free training every year as part of that. Um, so in essence, you're, you're getting a trade-off. You can do free training for uh, licensure renewal particularly or anything else, um, you know, at the level. Uh, we also offer a travel package membership that's free as a part of it. And there's some other little perks like that, Andrea. Now, for interns and for students, it's not $100. So student membership is 25 interns are 40 So there is a difference. Right. Right. And of course, for Finn, it's 25 across all categories. Right. Right. Okay. And as far as um, the chapter itself, so the rebranding, well, I say rebranding, but if a new chapter emerges wherever, if it's Jacksonville, which it's going to be, of course, and um, like you said, St. Mm -hmm. Peter's and things like that. So um, have there been bylaws created for FFTA? Are they merging down? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we do have, we've re, we had to rewrite, that's part of what took a long time. We had to rewrite our bylaws and get our board, uh, the FFTA board, to pass those and register those with the state. So we have model bylaws now for the new rebranded chapters and some of the chapters are in the, that are active are in the process of redoing theirs and larry is the is the ffta board now made up of the presidents of the chapters what is the governance yeah, now all the chapter presidents are members and then there are three elected at large members president secretary and treasurer and they are they are elected from among the presidents or from among the um, membership? No, they're just elected from membership. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Okay. Um more questions. So, yeah, just a couple, because I know where we got like six minutes or seven. Um so I did see Dr. Ball, you put on there your email for anyone who wants to join up. Uh, is that the mailing list or to become a member? Or do you want uh, to either one? Send okay. it to me. Just send me an email, and I'll put you on our list. And okay. if you want to join, I'll send you an invoice with Square that you can pay online. Real simple. Okay, I'll write that down as well, because we're going to add all of this to our newsletter, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, okay. Well. I'm not sure that we're going to advertise FFTA, but we might say if you have a question about FFTA and, and, and right. direct them to Larry, we could exactly. do that. Exactly. We could do that. And a personal yes. question for myself, as far as the mailing list, um, I want to say there was a question on the chat that I can't pinpoint right now. Oh, no, here it is. Is there a way for the recording of this meeting to be shared to the 12,000? Um, so, of course, Finn has our mailing list. Do we want the to be sent out to FFTA since you are present tonight? Is that okay? I, I think because we have members of both, 
that if yeah. FFTA members receive the, the newsletter or the information and wish to distribute it, we're certainly not going to tell them not to do that. Okay, just wanted to check. And certainly, yeah. because you have a Facebook of the fin, that will certainly yeah. be pub, you know, published there. Okay, so that works, so then they'll be able to access it. Exactly, exactly. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thank you very much, everyone. Ellen or Carrie or Vinny, do you have any questions for us? I, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Okay. I'm just taking it all in. I'm glad I came because I would not have known to uh, click on the other to join. Okay, right. And Carrie, any questions? I don't. I, I appreciate that it was laid out what the difference is because it's still just trying to sort that out and sure. figure who does what, where, when, why. <laughs> oh, I do have a question, Annalyn. Sorry. And, and this goes back to the previous meeting. Were, was someone going to send out, and it, forgive me if I'm misquoting here, a script that we were supposed to be able to use once we find our uh, district people? Because I found mine. And I'm anxious to go Yay! talk. Yay! All right. Yes, we do, in fact, have a script. Uh, and so, you know, when I, w once I get my academic uh, papers graded, I'll, I'll be able to spend some time on the newsletter and getting all that distributed. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You betcha. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, that's another thing that, that we, you know, we're, we're a clearinghouse for information of this type, right? Um, so, so. You know, we're, we are advocates for both organizations, are advocates for all MFTs, uh, regardless of. Um, and that's why we encourage people to join both because, you know, we are, we are working in collaboration, um, offering different things, but, but all in the support of. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, um, again, Larry, thank you very much for, um, for helping me and us clarify. Um, I'm sure there's still more to be clarified. I'm sure there's lots of questions that people have. If at the end of listening to this, anyone who listens to it, um, if you do have a questions, shoot us an email. Larry's uh, is, is in there and uh, I can stick mine in here as well so that we can... Um, did I do it right? Nope. There we go. Um, so scroll through the messages and, and see the various emails and things. Please keep asking the questions. And if you are so moved, please join. So May thank I you ask very you much. One more question? I apologize. I just thought sure. of, I'm in Palm Beach Gardens. How do I know where the local FFTA chapter is in terms of meetings since it's not virtual? Very good. Yeah. So Debbie Manigate is the leader, one of the two leaders in Palm Beach, and they had one meeting at Nova Southeastern there in the uh, Fort Lauderdale area, Davie, I guess, and uh, they haven't planned another meeting yet, um, so I've been talking with Debbie about that. They want me to come down and do something, so we're trying to work out some dates. Probably what That's needs to I, I would hope, Larry, that at some point on your website that you'll you'll have available yeah. Yeah, we'll have all that. a list of all right. the chapters and all the people that are contacts. Right. And so that if right. a chapter if isn't up and running, uh, you know, Ellen and Carrie can go harass those people to, hey, make this happen. And for those of you who are listening to this recording and are in a, a county that has no chapter, then please reach out to Larry and and we will support you to create a chapter just like right, jacksonville right. is is starting to uh, looking to wind up and, and create one i think there's a question in the chat about uh north central florida and i assume that's the gainesville yeah. chapter uh, i'm not sure what's happening with them but you they're know, meeting they're, they're, they're meeting. meeting regularly okay. so if you don't if if you don't know if you've got a chapter Reach out to Larry. He'll tell you if there is one and probably a contact. Well, Larry at Larry at Larry Green dot com is the president and they uh, they do have active meetings. Very Larry good. at Larry dot Green dot com. That's Gainesville. Also add the link for the FFTA website on the chat. 
so that when they do, uh, when we do send out the recording, they could see it there as well, please. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this may shut down automatically in a minute. So thank you everyone. Mm -hmm. And as soon as this recording is available, we'll post it. And thank you for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.